Hey guys, this is God of Politics. We're going to a brand new video, but before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the polls again and answering the question of which polls you should trust. Now, is there one polling service that is accurate all the time? Is there a polling service that's inaccurate all the time? Are there polling services that are accurate in some places but not others? Those are the questions I'm going to be answering in this video i'm going to be using 538 to have a compilation a list of all of these polls because rcp doesn't list all of the pollsters but it does on 530 and so that's what i'm going to be looking at so we have the overall polling average here which on november 3rd the day of the election was biden plus 8.4 which was 3.9 percentage points off because biden ended up winning the popular vote by 4.5 percentage points now it really was not very close the entire time. Of course, back in, you know, around April, April, Biden's lead was only around five points. But even just before the election, his lead went up to double digits in mid-October. It did fall towards the election, but they still were quite off compared to the actual result. And there were some polls, however that did show a result that ended up being more accurate. So we can look at these polls before the election, and we can see here that there were a number of polls that were actually quite accurate. For example, IBD slash TIPP. I actually said on my Twitter that I thought that their poll would be the most accurate and their poll would be accurate, and then I ended up being right about that. They had a poll with Biden winning by four points. They had a poll with him winning by five points. What did he end up winning by? Four and a half percentage points. So they were exactly right about that poll. Now, Harris uh, was another poll that was quite accurate. Harris x the Hill. Uh, they actually don't always do their polls. Uh, this is Harris. I believe this is actually might be the Harvard Harris poll. Yeah, okay. So this was the Harvard Harris poll that it was. Um, but that's different from Harris X. But they also got their poll right. Originally, back in the summer, they actually had Biden up around double digits, I believe, that. but that lead did fall to Biden plus five. But then you, of course, have the more inaccurate pollsters, like the Economist slash YouGov, which had Biden up 10 points in their final poll before the election with likely voters. They had Biden getting 53% of the vote, which was only you know, 1.7 percentage points off, but they had Trump getting 43% of the vote, which was 3.8 percentage points off. So that's really where they got their error. And you can make the argument, of, oh, the undecideds just went towards the Republican candidate, but that doesn't tell the whole story. And the gist of it was that Republicans were undersampled in these polls, and either that's the problem or the people, you know, there was that secret Trump voter effect. There's a number of factors that are at play here, but you can see here that the general consensus was that Biden was up a couple points more than what he actually ended up winning by. Swayable had Biden plus six. Reuters had Biden plus seven with likely voters. YouGov had Biden plus eight a couple of days before the election. Rasmussen's an interesting one. They actually had Biden up plus one. Now, Rasmussen is an interesting pollster because there are positives of it. They do generally provide a polling uh, data that is, you know, kind of aggregates the average and makes it a little bit more accurate usually, but there are a number of problems with it. It's one of the few polling services that I've ever seen that is openly partisan with their polling company. Of course, CNN's left-leaning, Washington Post's left-leaning, Fox News is right-leaning, but their polling services are separate from that. But Rasmussen is the polling service, and they are quite right-leaning, which does kind of, you know, mess up their polls, and I, I do believe at least some of the time. And what it does do, what Rasmussen does do, they have polling averages that are quite far off from the actual polling average of all the polls, their polling averages, their weekly polling averages, monthly polling averages, whatever you want to use, compared to the actual average of all the polls, they're usually quite far off from each other before the election. But getting closer and closer to the election and on the day of the election, Rasmussen usually hedges their bets and they have a result that is closer towards it actually ends up being. Because we did actually have a couple of polls that from Rasmussen that did show Trump up. I'm not sure if I can find them here. Yeah, you can see October 25th to October 27th, they did have Trump plus one, which would have ended up being five and a half points off, but then they shifted their poll two points to the left, ended up having Biden plus one. But if you go back to 2018, 
In 2018, they had Republicans winning at the generic congressional ballot by one point. They ended up losing it by 8.6 percentage points, so they had a big error then. In 2016, you saw a similar story. They had a couple of polls before the election that had Trump up in the popular vote, and then right before the election, they moved it to around Hillary plus two. That's what Hillary ended up winning the popular vote by. So overall, there are a lot of inaccurate pollsters on both sides, more so, much more so on the left-leaning side, as in they overestimate Democrats, even Fox News overestimates Democrats because their polling service, as I said before, is different. NBC News, Wall Street Journal, they are off. Morning, uh, Morning Consult is generally quite off as well. So most of these polls were quite inaccurate. But the pollster that I would consider the most accurate for national polls is IBD slash TIPP, and they did deserve that A-plus rating. Now, going state by state to some of these swing states, we can't see for a state like Arizona, for example. The polls were generally not too bad. Of course, you have SurveyMonkey, which is absolutely terrible, but... You do have some of these polls that were quite accurate. Marist College got it pretty much spot on, having Biden plus one point with registered voters. They had it tied with likely voters, so Biden ended up winning it by, leave, by I believe, 0.3 percentage points, as you can see here. So they were generally quite accurate in that regard. Change research, Biden plus three, that's generally quite good. Reuters had Biden plus three with likely voters. And you can see the polls were generally decent here. Siena College, of course, did get their poll more off. Most of their polls were quite off. CNN was quite off as well, but sort of went in the margin of error. Trafalgar did get this poll quite off. They generally do not do as well in the Sun Belt. They had Trump plus three. They also had Trump plus five in Georgia. And they generally don't have a good track record in the South. If you look at the 2018 governor race, they had Brian Kemp up 12 points. They had... Uh, Dean Heller up, I believe, three points in his Senate race, which he ended up losing by five points. And in the Arizona Senate race, they had uh, they had Martha McSally up against Kirsten Sinema in the 2018 race. Rasmussen did get this race quite off as well. They had Trump plus four. That was four and a half points off. And you, of course, have these pretty unknown pollsters that did get the race very off as well. And Susquehanna was generally very accurate overall. I would say that they definitely are up there in terms of being accurate. Um, Monmouth, not too accurate either. They had Biden plus seven. They have a number of different models, but I believe Biden plus six was their kind of median model. Ohio predictive OH, OH you know, I see OH, I think Ohio, but OH predictive insights was generally quite accurate for Arizona overall, and they were rated the best for Arizona, I do believe. But the polling averages were generally not too far off in Arizona. Going to the next swing state, which I guess you could say is Florida. Florida was quite off. Trafalgar did get Florida accurate. I do believe they also got Florida accurate in 2016 and 2018, so that's good for them. Insider Advantage did well as well. Uh, Quinnipiac, of course, absolutely a terrible pollster. I could go on and on about how bad Quinnipiac is, but you all know how bad Quinnipiac is. And this is really just a testament to how awful the 538 ratings are. How the hell do you give Quinnipiac an A- minus rating, but you also give Trafalgar an A- minus rating? Quinnipiac literally had... Biden plus like 11 in Florida at one point. They had uh, Susan Collins losing by like 12 points. So they had absolutely terrible polls, and that was shown with their Florida poll as just one example. Susquehanna, of course, as I pointed out, they have good polls. New York Times generally favors Biden by about five percentage points, and that's something that you have to know. St. Pete polls, not too bad, but quite off as well. Emerson, quite off. RMG Research, quite off. You know, these polls were like six, seven, eight, nine, ten percentage points. ABC News, Washington Post, even though they had Biden, Biden plus 17 points in Wisconsin, they had Trump plus two in Florida. So it shows the inconsistency of their polls. I really don't give them much credit for getting that Florida race right because there was a lot of inconsistency of their polls. You don't know what to trust. You don't know what's going to be accurate, and it really was to their detriment. I would not give them an A-plus A rating at all, but of course, 538 is owned by ABC News, so they don't really have much of a choice. But don't trust ABC News, Washington Post polls at all. They are absolutely terrible. Also, don't trust public policy polling. PPP is absolutely garbage. Do not trust them. Trafalgar, great in Florida, not great in Georgia, not great in Arizona, not great in Nevada, but Florida, they are good in, and they're also good in the Rust Belt, which we will talk about later. Monmouth, I generally thought they were decent, but they ended up being very, very bad, at least in the state of Florida. Um, but overall, the Florida polls were quite inaccurate. They were off by about five, six percentage points. Georgia, the polls were quite accurate. They had Biden winning by 1.2. He ended up winning the state by, I believe, again, around 0.23 percentage points, very similar to the margin in Arizona. 
And we look at the polls here. Trafalgar did get this race quite off. Four and a half percentage points. They got it off. Landmark Communications, they got it quite off as well. Of course, you have the terrible polls on both sides. You have Swayable, which got the race absolutely way off. You had Insider Advantage, generally quite decent as well. I consider two and a half polling error to be quite decent. Emerson, also quite a decent poll. Very good for them. YouGov actually did well in Georgia. Landmark Communications did well in their poll uh, back over here. But then their final poll, they did have Trump plus four PPP didn't do too bad in, in Georgia of all places. Uh, and so the generally the Georgia polls were quite accurate. I would say the best poll in Georgia probably going to be, an, I want to say insider advantage is the best pollster. They were pretty consistent overall. They were good in Florida. They were good in Pennsylvania. They were good in Georgia. And they have a slight Republican bias, but given how much of a Democratic bias in terms of their results, all these other polls have, I think that was pretty good. So Let's go to the next state, which is going to be uh, Michigan. So Michigan polling averages had Biden up eight percentage points. He ended up winning it by two and a half percentage points. But you have a lot of terrible polls here. Trafalgar did get the race five and a half percentage points off, but then you also had Redfield and Wilton Strategies, which got which got the race eleven points off. You had, of course, their other polls. Insider Advantage generally quite good here as well. They had Biden plus two. I think Insider Advantage, I would say. Overall, is probably the best pollster. Emerson College got Biden plus seven quite off. Epic MRA got the race quite off as well. CNN, of course, terrible pollster had Biden plus 12 with likely voters. PPP, terrible pollster here as well. So overall, polls were quite inaccurate here um, overall. But Insider Advantage, again, had a very good result. And, of course, the general accuracy of their polls is not the only metric you can use to see the overall trust, uh, you know, the how much you can trust a poll, because there are other things that there are other things that go into that, like the methodology. If a poll is a bad methodology but gets the results right every time, is that really a poll you should trust? Is that really a poll you can say in the next election, I'm going to trust this poll, or is it a poll that just got likely because of the election? And that's something that you'll have to take into account because I'm really not sure about a lot of these polls. As for Minnesota, which is the next state, generally quite accurate, only two points off, and they were pretty decent in most of these polls over here. Of course, the uh, some polls had them in double digits, like St. Cloud University, whoever the hell that is. Trafalgar had Biden plus three. They were also quite bad. Survey USA, decent. Grav is bad. Survey USA, decent here as well. Civics, not very good either. So I guess none of these polls were that close, but they kind of all averaged themselves out to have only a Democrat plus two bias. New Hampshire, not many polls from here, but of course we did have very bad polls like Biden plus 19, but he ended up winning it quite handily. So none of these polls really got much focus anyway. The next state, which I'm going to say is North Carolina, Biden was up plus 1.8 in the average. He ended up losing it by 1.2 percentage points, which is a 3% polling error. Not too bad, but when you look at these individual polls, they weren't really very good, uh, especially polls like Swayable, which is generally not very good overall. Insider Advantage did overestimate Trump a little bit more here. They overestimated him by 2.8 percentage points, but still within the margin of error, still quite an accurate holster. One, the effectively the Achilles heel for Insider Advantage, they do have small sample sizes, but generally they were quite accurate in their results. Emerson, not too bad. Trafalgar, very good here as well. CCES slash YouGov, not very good. CNN, of course, absolutely terrible polls there as well. Rasmussen had a good poll here. Um, and yeah, I'd probably say the best here, maybe Trafalgar, maybe Rasmussen, to be honest, maybe Emerson, not really sure, but none of them were very, really too far off. Ohio, not really a swing state, but I did want to look at it because the polls were just absolutely awful. Quinnipiac having Biden plus four in Ohio like is this even serious anymore it's just it's it's terrible I mean even Trafalgar underestimated Trump in the state of Ohio but I don't really want to look too much at the Ohio polls they were absolutely terrible Pennsylvania Biden plus 4.7 they were off by three and a half percentage points and of course you had the bad polls that had Biden up close to double digits like morning console which you should not really trust at all Marist College not very good either Rasmussen decent actually underestimated Biden here Susquehanna had a decent poll only off by two percentage points 
and none of these polls were too accurate. As again, Siena College overestimating Biden by about five points each time. ABC News, Washington Post having Biden up seven points. Not an accurate poll there either. Atlas Intel had a decent poll. Muhlenberg College, not very good. Trafalgar was decent. They had Trump plus one, so I would consider that quite accurate, like Susquehanna being within the margin of error, which I do give credit to pollsters these days. Texas, or not Tennessee, but Texas, uh, Trump was up 1.1 percentage points in the average. You know, I think most of us knew not to trust these polls like data for priors, which is a Democratic internal, effectively. Same thing with PPP. Uh, but many polls were quite accurate here. Gravis was actually quite accurate here. YouGov was not too bad, about off about three and a half percentage points. Morning Consult, again, terrible polls of Morning Consult, terrible polls from Quinnipiac. Don't trust either of them. They're so, so, so bad. Virginia, not really a swing state, but the polls were quite accurate here. And then the final state was Wisconsin, which the polls were so, so, so bad off like seven, eight percentage points. I mean, this is just ridiculous. And let's see if we can find it. The infamous Biden plus 17 poll from the ABC News slash Washington Post. I mean, it's really just ridiculous, this poll. I mean, it's just 57 to 40. I mean, it's truly, truly, truly terrible. I mean, how could they even release that poll? And Nate Silver, like, you know, oh, we gave him credit for releasing it but their poll was so bad and then they get an a plus rating i mean it's just a joke to be honest gravis also got it way off morning console got it way off fox news got it pretty off as well and guess who the poll which was actually accurate here was it ended up being trafalgar which had biden up 0.6 percentage points biden won the state by as you can see uh 0.6 percentage points so trafalgar is absolutely dead on in wisconsin having Biden. They had Biden plus two, but I do believe that they released a poll after this. I'm not sure if it's listed here, but they, oh yeah, we can see it here. The Trafalgar poll did have it even, but I believe it was Biden plus six overall. But yeah, their poll was quite accurate here. If you look at this, uh, we can see, yes, he was up point uh, you, you can see he was up 0.7 percentage points. So very, very accurate. But I believe overall uh, it was, or yet yeah, the lean. So it was overall 0.4 percentage points. So very, very accurate with that Trafalgar poll. And I give him a lot of credit for that. And you can trust them in a lot of places, but don't trust them in states like Arizona or Georgia, but do trust them in states like Wisconsin. They actually didn't do a Wisconsin poll in 2016, so we don't know too much about their history. But we do know that in 2020, they were quite accurate. But overall, polling's not dead, but it, it's pretty dead. I mean, most of these polls were absolutely terrible. Polls are going to have to change if they really want to have any credibility left because you can't just get seven, eight percentage points errors in some of these states and even bigger for individual polls and then say that you're a serious organization because that's just absolutely ridiculous. And overall, I would say that the best poll is uh, insider advantage in terms of getting the results right. Maybe their methodology is quite off, their sampling size is small, but if you're looking solely at getting the results dead on, they were the most accurate along with Trafalgar, along with the uh, Insider Advantage, Susquehanna. Those three polls, I would say, are quite good. Emerson's not too bad, but again, they had a lot of big errors as well. You can go state-by-state state polls. St. Pete was quite off, but not, not too bad. Um, OH Predictive Insights was not too bad as well. But overall, you have a lot of things going on here with polls, and they're generally not to be trusted unless they have a proven track record in that state. So thank you for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But again, guys, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you guys later.